Okay, um, thank you everyone um, for joining us today. Um, my name is Marilyn Lau and I am with the USC Viterbi School of Engineering's um, Admission and Student Engagement Team. Um, so it is my pleasure um, to welcome you to today's um, session of our Spotlight Series, where we are highlighting our master's degree in astronautical engineering. So we are joined um, today um, by Professor Mike Grutman, um, who will be sharing information on the degree programs um, and who can also answer any questions that you might have. So, you know, just first things first is um, before we get started, you know, I do want to mention that uh, we will be sending out a copy of today's presentation slide. Um, there is a lot of information that we will be going through, so there is no need to jot them down if you don't need them right away. Um, it does take around one to two business days for us to get this email out. Um, and also, you know, um, in terms of asking questions, um, we do highly encourage you to um, ask any questions that you have by utilizing the Q&A panel. Um, and then, you know, um, we'll go ahead um, and answer those, um, you know, um, as if they pertain to the slides um, or, you know, we will have a Q&A session at the end where you will be able to ask all your questions um, to Professor Gretman. Um, and then also, you know, I do also want to, um, you know, mention, you know, for those of you who are, um, you know, watching this recording, um, at this webinar as a recording um, at a later time, um, you know, please do note that um, the content um, is as um, from today, um, April 12th, 2023, um, and we do encourage you to visit our website for the most updated um, information as those may change. So for today's program, I'll go through quickly um, a little bit about University of Southern California um, and then about the Viterbi School of Engineering, followed by um, Dana Viterbi, um, just a quick introduction um, of our enrollment options, our delivery method, um, tuition and fees. And then I'll go ahead and um, you know, pass the presentation over to Professor Grutman, who will you know, take us through um, the Master of Science in Astronautical um, department and program overview um, and some application criteria. And then we'll go ahead and wrap up with a Q&A. So here's just some images um, for, um, for those of you, you know, who haven't been to um, our campus, um, which is located in Los Angeles. So a little bit about the University of Southern California. So, you know, we are the oldest private university in the Western US, um, you know, founded way back in 1880. Um, we do have, you know, um, over 49,500 um, students um, in which, you know, majority of those come from our graduate um, population, which is made up of, you know, um, our uh, master students as well as doctoral. And then we have, um, you know, over 4,700 um, full-time faculty, um, you know, which do also include our adjunct um, faculty as well, um, you know, who do bring in, um, you know, um, experience, expertise, you know, from the workforce into the classrooms um, for our students. And then our student population is very, very diverse. Um, you know, we do have students who come from all different walks of life, um, you know, from, you know, different industry backgrounds or even, you know, different, you um, geography um, as well. So, um, you know, very, very diverse um, student um, st student population base. Um, and lastly, you know, we are located in um, Los Angeles, just around, you know, like a 10 to 15 minute drive from um, downtown. Our Viterbi School at a glance, um, you know, we are, we do have eight academic departments, um, you know, um, and astronautical department, um, astronautical um, engineering department, you know, being one of those. Um, and then, um, you know, we do have um, 189 tenure track faculty, um, you know, 35 total um, TTNAE members, um, and then over 90 um, National Science Foundation um, career national and presidential young investigators. Um, we do, um, we are a leader in funded research. Um, we do have over, you know, 35 research centers um, and more than $213 million spent in research expenditures annually. Um, and then also, you know, um, our research centers are very highly interdisciplinary. Um, and, you know, um, I will mention in the next slide um, a bit more about the research centers that we do have. 
In terms of student populations, you know, as you can see from this slide, um, that our graduate student base is almost triple the amount of our undergraduate um, within the Viterbi School. Um, and our graduate students are made up of, you know, our master's students, our um, like online, both online and on campus, and then also our um, graduate certificate, as well as our PhD doctoral. So for um, just really quickly in terms of ranking, so, um, you know, um, USC um, Viterbi, you know, we have, uh, we are consistently, you know, top ranked um, graduate engineer, engineering program um, amongst the best engineering graduate schools. Um, and then also in terms of the best online graduate engineering programs, um, you know, we are number five ranked um, for our online computer science program and number seven um, across, you know, um, in general, the on, for in general um, for the online graduate engineering programs. Um, for those of you who are veterans, um, you know, we are also, you know, ranked um, number nine um, for the best college for best um, college for veterans. Um, and then in terms of program specific for veterans, we are ranked number 12 for computer science and number seven um, for um, general um, graduate engineering programs. So a little bit more about, you know, research. So, you know, as I mentioned um, in the previous slide that, you know, um, Viterbi School, we are a um, leader in funded research. Um, you know, we are highly interdisciplinary research um, environments, you know, over 30 of them. Um, and, you know, I do kind of want to highlight that, you know, we do have um, our Space Engineering Research Center, um, which is located in Marina Del Rey. Um, and then also, you know, we do encourage you, you know, if you're very interested in research or you want to learn more, we do encourage you to visit our website to learn more of the 35 um, research centers that we offer. So just some, um, you know, points of distinction, um, you know, USC engineering, you know, we do have international reputation for excellence. So, you know, I'm sure, you know, kind of anywhere in the world, you know, you mentioned USC, you know, there are people who are familiar with, um, with USC, um, you know, and, you know, sometimes you see people on the airplanes, you know, and it's really good for networking as well, um, you know, which comes into the Trojan Family Network. Um, so the Trojan Family Network, we do have over 88,000, you know, engineers strong, um, you know, based all over the world. Um, and, and, there, and like I mentioned, you know, it's also good for networking um, and um, professional um, connections as well. Um, and then we do offer um, unique programs, um, whether they can be held online, um, on site um, or on campus. And then in terms of, you know, offering different types of uh, programs, we do offer, you know, um, doctoral programs, master's programs, um, and bachelor's program. Um, but, you know, on top of that, we also offer, you know, graduate certificates, um, short courses and custom programs. So short courses and custom programs, you know, are more on the um, continuing education side um, where you will receive um, a certificate um, upon completion um, instead of a actual degree like um, our graduate certificates um, or master's uh, program, for example. So in terms of course delivery method, so, you know, within um, USC Viterbi, we have two different um, course delivery methods. Um, we have on campus, which we would, um, you know, reference as full time um, because, you know, students that tend to take that um, delivery method, they are um, on campus, um, attending courses on campus, and they're not working, so they are able to take more classes per semester, you know, averaging around three classes, which then means that um, they may be able to graduate in around one and a half to two years. And then we have our online delivery method, um, you know, um, which is done through um, Dana Viterbi. Um, and, you know, this delivery method is, is tailored more for working professionals. So, you know, people who are working full time in the workforce. Um, and so then they are pursuing their um, degree program more on a uh, part time basis. So they do take one to two classes per semester and they're able to graduate between two and a half to three years. So just really quickly, you know, how does Dan Viterbi work? So Dana Viterbi is um, our own in-house um, state-of-the-art proprietary web-based delivery system. And, you know, it really enables our students from all over the world um, to be able to access classes, um, you know, in two ways. 
one, they can um, call in and dial in and attend lectures as it is happening. So they could be streaming it live um, or they can watch it afterwards as a recording. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, most of um, students, you know, they may be working professionals. So then it, they need that flexibility to watch the lectures on their own time um, after work and their personal commitments. But as a Dan of a Tribute student, you know, you do view the same lectures as on campus students. Um, you know, the content is fresh every semester. So we do ensure like our, um, our professors do ensure that they are bringing, you know, up to date um, content um, into the classroom. Um, and then also, you know, you can also, um, you know, participate in highly interactive discussions with, you know, not only your professors, um, but also your um, your classmates as well. You will be submitting your homework electronically as a online dance student. And then in terms of exams, so exams will actually be um, taken at proctor testing centers um, in person, um, you know, located either near your home or your work. Um, but, you know, if you are in um, the Los Angeles area, um, then you would actually be coming to USC campus to take your exams. So, you know, for those of you who are joining us um, now, um, either live or watching this recording um, afterwards, you know, um, and you're kind of unsure, you know, what what's the difference between the two delivery methods? Um, so here's just a side by side comparison um, just to show you um, that it mainly is kind of the delivery method. So the program admission, you know, it is the same whether you are a. Um, um, on campus or online student. Um, and then in terms of, you know, having access um, to um, the uh, course lectures, you know, for online students, it will be online with interactivity. And as an on-campus on student, you would actually be attending classes in person at USC. Um, and then in terms of, you know, having access to uh, online course archives, for a on-campus student, you know, you wouldn't be able to have access to this unless it is a Dan Avaturbi section. So what that means is that there is a Dan Avaturbi student in your um, class, and then you will have access to that. Um, but as an online Dan student, you will have access to that 100% um, for the semester of the course that you are enrolled in. Assignments um, are submitted electronically um, for online students, whereas um, on campus students will be submitted, um, you know, in the lecture or lab, but the course deadlines would be the same for both. Exams, as I um, touched on previously, you know, as an online student, it will be done um, at a proctor location. And then for on campus student, it will be um, at USC's campus. The courses per semester, um, you know, um, it, it, it varies, um, you know, for online student because they may be working professionals, they do tend to take um, fewer courses. Um, and then the degree completion requirement is the same for both delivery method, um, you know, depending on the program. Um, and so ultimately, you know, when you graduate, your USC diploma is just going to be from USC Viterbi, um, and there will be no distinction of whether you are an online student or an on-campus student. Um, so just really quickly, um, a kind of um, image of our Dan of Turby classroom, um, where we do have a live moderator behind each um, classroom. And um, some additional information, you know, for um, in terms of, you know, enrollment, um, we do have uh, formal admissions and we also have limited status. So limited status enrollment, you know, it is a enrollment option that allows qualified candidates to begin their coursework before formal admission. Um, and, you know, um, in addition to these standard backgrounds, you know, um, you know, for um, astronautical engineering, you know, it does require coursework in physics. Um, and also, you know, it's also limited in the sense that, you know, you can only take a maximum of 12 units, um, you know, that can be applied towards the degree program. Um, and, you know, also, it's also important to mention that, you know, being a limited status student does not guarantee you admission to formal admissions. Um, we also do offer the tuition deferment program. Um, you know, this is a program, you know, for students who are supported by their company in terms of tuition assistance that you can defer um, payment um, up to 90% until the semester is over. So, you know, for more information on that, we do encourage you to um, visit our um, web website link there um, for more details. 
Um, so really quickly, you know, just covering the tuition and fees. Um, so, you know, the tuitions um, do change per academic year. So for the per unit rate here, as you can see, is um, 2,309. Um, you know, it does fluctuate every single um, academic year. So we do recommend for you to visit our um, website um, for the most updated tuition um, rates. So for the application deadline, so we are still um, accepting um, applications um, for fall 2023 if you are intending to pursue your degree program as an online Dana Vetrabi student. Um, and as an online Dana Vetrabi student, you know, this extension, um, it also means that, you know, you are pursuing it um, completely online and that you do not require a student visa sponsorship. So the deadline for um, the astronautical engineering degree program for fall is May 15th. Um, and for those of you, you know, who decide that you want to apply for spring 2024, um, which is the following semester intake, um, the application deadline um, is October 15th. Um, but, you know, if you are intending to apply as an online dance student and you need a extension, uh, please reach out to myself. Um, at denavetribute.usc.edu and we'll be able to work with you on a possible extension. Um, and some useful links um, to help you get started um, um, that you can find here. Um, and then also, so let's go ahead now um, and, you know, and move on to, you know, the purpose of today's session um, is, you know, is to meet our professor, Mike Grumman. So Professor Grumman, you know, he is a program director um, of the um, Masters of Science in Astronautical Engineering. Um, and he's also a professor as well um, of the astronautical engineering uh, courses. You know, he's done so many, so many, many research and, you know, published so many books, which, you know, he will take you through his journey in the upcoming slides. Um, but, you know, he's done research in astronautics, uh, spacecraft, um, space um, mission design, space physics, uh, space instrumentation and sensors, space plasmas, uh, spacecraft technologies, rocketry, uh, propulsion, um, orbital um, debris, and just so much more. Um, and he's also, you know, he's also a author and has also, you know, co-authored more than 300 um, scholarly publications, um, which, you know, you guys can click on that link, um, you know, once you've received um, the, um, the presentation. Um, and he's also, um, you, know, and, you know, published, you know, um, six books as well that um, is included here. So he's done so much stuff um, and, you know, we're just so um, excited to welcome here um, today to join us. Um, so with that said, um, Professor Grumman, I'm going to hand this over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Can we go next slide? Thank you. So I will give you a quick overview of uh, the program and many key things uh, Marlene already mentioned. And I will perhaps just clarify a few things um, that might be useful. I will very briefly talk about Department of Astronautical Engineering, about the faculty research areas, and then we will concentrate on the specifics of the Master of Science degree in Astronautical Engineering. We'll talk about our students in the program, the coursework, which actually made our program one of the biggest in the country or maybe in the world, and uh, then criteria for master's applicants and uh, some uh, frequently asked questions. So uh, since you will be getting this presentation as a PDF, uh, there is my contact information. So don't hesitate to uh, send me an email with questions. I will do my best to reply or point you at least to the right person. Also, our program is unique in the United States. And again, you will see in a second why I'm saying that. If you are interested more in the details, the rationale, structure, how we got organized, there is a, a link here on this page, which is a PDF files of a key publications about the program, publications in the peer-reviewed space or astronautics journals and presented at the conferences. Next, please. So the department, uh, our Department of Astronautical Engineering was established in 2004. Now, in the United States, historically, space engineering was part of aerospace programs. And uh, 
unique programs separate from aerospace are very, very few. They're basically in the military academies, but not in the civilian universities. We went a different route to meet the specific demands of the space industry. And when I'm saying space industry, I also include government research and development centers in space, like NASA centers, the Air Force, and say Space Force. So we went a different route to establish a pure space focused program. There's a different reasons for that. And again, I refer you to these publications. If you don't have time simply to go through that, but I refer you to this PDF uh, where you can read more about that. But very briefly, traditional aerospace programs in the country, they're dominated by aeronautical engineering. That means fluid mechanics type that uh, originated from the aviation industry. And space industry is not being serve to the full degree. So this is what we did. We started a new pure space engineering department in 2004 based on the specialization in space that we had. And the growth of our program clearly indicate that we provide something of value for our customers, the space industry and government centers. I served as a founding chairman of the department. I served again as a chairman of the department during this last 20 years after the founding. So, but I'm in charge of the master's program since mid 1990s. Uh, and uh, on the left, there is a statue of Neil Armstrong, who before our time uh, graduated, uh, got master's degree in this, the, our engineering school. Next slide, please. As I said, the department started in 2004. There are no space engineering departments in the universities in the United States, only in the Air Force Institute of Technology and the Naval Postgrad School. Uh, we offer full set of degrees in space engineering. Astronautical engineering is a formal name. It's a Bachelor of Science, minor, Bachelor of Minor, Master of Science, Engineer, PhD, and Graduate Certificate. Our master's program is among the largest national programs in space engineering. Next, please. Our department is relatively small. We have only <clears throat> half a dozen uh, faculty. And by the way, on the left side, you can see them. And by the way, among these faculty is a research faculty, Professor David Barkert. Marlin mentioned Space Engineering Research Center in Marina del Rey. It's off campus, it's half an hour drive. And uh, Dave Barkert is the director of that center. So, so this center is uh, co-owned by our department. So you will have a chance just to get engaged there. But what made our program really prominent nationally and internationally, and one of the largest in the country was the selection of adjunct faculty and part-time lecturers. They are coming from industry and Los Angeles is still a hub of the space industry in the United States. And you see our specialists, leading specialists in these space companies, large legacy companies, small companies, and government centers, JPL Aerospace Corporation, Aerojet, Rocketdyne, Hyperloop, Microcosm, Raytheon, and others. So these specialists, brought highly specialized courses to our program and we offer an unmatched selection of courses in various areas of space technology and uh, these faculty adjunct faculty really made our program special and make us distinctly different from other programs in the country these specialists from the industry and government centers they bring the latest technologies the latest practices that are uh, being used in the space industry. And again, this is what made our program so strong and attractive. Next slide, please. Our faculty uh, were doing uh, as all faculty do in all leading research universities. And you saw that uh, our school qualifies as a research university with a $200 million plus research and development funding. So our faculty is, is in, in all leading engineering schools. We do research, we teach, we serve university, and we publish our science 
engineering papers and publish a bunch of books. So you a selection of some books published by our faculties on this slide. Next, please. Again, very briefly, the, in the department, we are engaged in various areas of space science and engineering. This is a full time faculty what does uh, we engage in astronautics, space environment, uh, instrumentation, propulsion. Our faculty in, was involved in a number of space missions run by NASA, by other government agencies, by industry. And also we have uh, at the bottom a few student projects. These student projects attract a number of students. There's a one major prominent group called the Rocket Propulsion Lab that builds solid propellant rockets and launches them higher and higher every year. Then there's a liquid propulsion laboratory that builds liquid rocket engines. And then uh, there are also programs in the Space Engineering and Research Center that is off campus where a number of our master students are engaged and uh, they uh, launched a few cube satellites that are already flying. Next, please. And as a, a big engineering school, this is a wonderful opportunity to interact with other departments, got expertise from other departments. So our faculty collaborates with the physics department, electrical engineering, mechanical and others on campus. And we also have a very extensive cooperation with the other universities and government centers like NASA centers, JPL, Goddard, uh, Los Alamos National Lab, uh, other leading universities like Arizona, Boston University, Berkeley, Harvard, with industrial companies, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and others, and also with the foreign uh, research and development centers. Next, please. So the degree uh, that we uh, developed is in a highly dynamic and technologically advanced area. Now, our program is also unique in a sense that is designed for those who got Bachelor of Science degrees in science and engineering. We do not require aerospace engineering degree as a Bachelor of Science degree. Now, this reflects what's happening in the space industry today. Space industry and government centers, they bring a lot of hire, a lot of Bachelor of Science engineers from all different flavors. Chemical engineering, electrical, computer, you name it, physicists, uh, mathematicians, astronomers, and uh, they perform very well doing their jobs, but they have a uh, limits growing in the space industry. They need additional specific space engineering education, master of science degree, and many aerospace programs in the country. They require bachelor of science in aerospace engineering in order to continue and get the advanced degrees. We went different route. We are starting with Bachelor of Science degree in any area of science and engineering. Basically, you have to have undergraduate mathematics and physics. We will take you from there. You will go through our one of the, as we call it, boot camp uh, classes in the spacecraft design and uh, which provide an overview. So we will bring you very quickly to the regular studies in astronautical engineering. So we are combining fundamentals with the highly specialized courses and the highly specialized courses are coming from the wells of our expertise of our adjunct faculty. Next slide, please. Students. One half of our students are on campus students pursuing degrees is typically three semesters or maybe four semesters it's because some students are getting uh, part time jobs, uh, JPL, Aerospace Corporation, SpaceX is our neighbor that hired tons of our grads and students. And one half of our students are online students through the distance education network, then at Viterbi coming from all over the country. In a moment, you will see it. We have the students who are in active duty officers in the Air Force, the Space Force, Army, and uh, all other branches. Our students coming with their various backgrounds of Bachelor of Science and actually Master of Science. Some students with Master of Science degree also come to our program to get a second Master of Science degree in Space Engineering, Astronautical Engineering. So our students have a background of mechanical, electrical, aerospace engineering, chemical, computer, physics, astronomy, and we even occasionally have students with an unusual 
backgrounds like medical doctors who want to become astronauts or coming to our program perhaps one every two years. So next slide, please. The program grows significantly since establishment. And this is again a clear indication that we are providing something of value to the space industry because uh, if you are coming from the online educational side, legacy companies like Boeing, Raytheon's, Lockheed Martins, they pay tuition for their students to go to any engineering school in the country, any leading engineering school in the country. And so it's a highly competitive area. And if they're coming to our program, this is a clear indication that we provide something of value. So you see the gradation curve on the right shows that the numbers of degrees that we offer are grows uh, from one year to another. We, off, we already awarded during this short period of time since our founding almost 1000 degrees with we will get in one year and a half, 1,000 master's degrees. Today, we we award 70 to 80 degrees each year. This constitutes uh, a little bit more than 3% national master of science degrees in the broad area of aeronautical, astronautical and aerospace engineering. National statistics doesn't distinguish this, uh, between these fields. So we are a really big program uh, accounting for a large fraction of the national master of science degrees in space engineering. And the map on the left shows where the students are coming from. And you could see that practically every state in the United States where there's a, some space industry or government centers, we have students from there and also some students from overseas, particularly military officers who serve and uh, study part time. Next slide, please. We have a big community in uh, our alumni. It's a group on LinkedIn, um, almost 700 members. Uh, so you can go there, become a member, and just uh, go and just ping your former former students in our program and say, hey, I'm from uh, this program. Uh, are there jobs there? So it's a very good networking uh, tool. Next slide, please. All right, so what the program requires to get a degree. So you need to, to pass through, take nine courses. Each course is three units. So 27 units total. We require four required courses in space system designs, which is an overview of fundamentals of space systems. I teach this course for the last 25 years. Uh, it's one of the largest in the country, 2,500 graduate students took it. Space environment and spacecraft interactions, spacecraft propulsion, and orbital mechanics. Then we require to take three courses, so-called core elective courses from the least of our core astronautics courses. In addition, two more technical elective courses are required. And these elective courses could be taken basically from any engineering or hard science course offered in the university. Most of our students take these two technical elective courses from our core elective courses because the unmatched selection of space engineering courses is actually the reason for most of our students why they enroll in a program. But if you need to take a course outside of our department, you are welcome to do it. Electrical engineering, computer science, uh, physics, astronomy, mathematics, whatever is needed. Uh, we are here to help you select the proper course. Master of Thesis is not required. It's optional. Very few students do it, but a few students every year, but very few because the amount of work that goes there and the credit in terms of units towards the degree uh, is such that it's much easier to take a coursework covering the same number of units. So very few students choose to do Master of Th Science thesis. As a as I said, uh, admission requirements is a Bachelor of Science degree in any area of engineering or science. No requirement for aerospace engineering. You have to have 3.0 GPA. Uh, we required in the past and we will require in the future GREs. So they were waived uh, at this time in the school. It's uh, 
It's uh, what happened during the COVID pandemic and the two letters of recommendation. As I mentioned, student projects at the bottom left, many on campus students who are studying full time participate in the student projects, such as liquid propulsion laboratory. Next slide, please. As I said, astronautics coursework is uh, an match selection of courses. Most of them are taught by the outside adjunct faculty who are specialists in the leading government centers or industrial companies. Uh, the list of courses is shown here that is being uh, offered and they are color coded a little bit. So we have a, if we start at the left uh, top, uh, courses in the space system type, then the followed courses in space, space dynamics, it's orbital mechanics, spacecraft attitude dynamics, navigation, and others. Then there's a cluster of courses in the propulsion, starting with the introductory course in the propulsion, and then liquid rocket propulsion, solid rocket propulsion, advanced electric propulsion, uh, launch vehicle systems, and others. There's a courses on the structures and dynamics of the materials used in the space systems. Then there is a cluster of courses dealing with various subsystems of satellites. And there are also another cluster of courses that is growing uh, focused on the space safety, safety of space missions and operations. Then human space flight courses are being a cluster being developed. Uh, we are benefiting by bringing on board as a faculty member, a former astronaut who is developing this cluster of courses. And there's some other courses also there. Next slide, please. Criteria for applications, we already uh, talked about that. So it's um, Bachelor of Science in any any area of engineering or science, GPA, GREs, uh, deadlines that Marilyn uh, described already. She already talked about the so-called limited status enrollment. So basically, if you have 3.0 GPA in your Bachelor of Science studies, uh, we can clear you within a week to start studies. And while you start getting uh, your coursework, your education, you can apply in a regular way for the formal admission to the program. Next slide, please. Common questions. So this is to preempt some of the questions that may be coming. A typical time to complete the program, full-time students, as Marlene already said, it's about three semesters, one and a half years, three courses per semester. For part-time students, online students working full-time, it's typically one or perhaps two courses per semester, so it takes, say, four years. Course sequence. Do you have to take electives before the required courses? This is entirely up to you. Most of our courses or I shouldn't say most, say a large number of our courses do not require prerequisites. However, if you take a course in advanced propulsion, you have to take a course in the propulsion first. The same orbital mechanics too, you have to take orbital mechanics one first. So this is a, but it's up to you whether to concentrate on the core courses or the required courses in the beginning or just technical electives. So it's entirely up to you. We're here advising you, helping you to shape your educational plans to make sure that you will choose it in the right way. Although I have to say that most of our students start with the required courses because this is the reason that they are required. They present a foundation for our program. Now, sometimes students are coming to the program they already had in their undergraduate years or somewhere in the coursework that overlaps with our required courses. You don't have to repeat this coursework, we will waive it, no problem at all. Technical electives from other departments, yes, you are welcome to take this. And uh, a few more words how the distance education and uh, regular on campus uh, studies work. The same lecture is attended by the on campus students and online students watch it live. Now, many students don't watch, don't watch courses live because of their other commitments in the work or maybe different time zones. So they watch it recorded. Also, some students that are full time on, cam on campus, they also sometimes skip the courses 
uh, attending a lecture or two and they watch it in the recording. All students will have the access to all the materials, to all the lectures. So it's whether you are on campus or a remote online students. So it's a very convenient. It was mentioned that the exams are proctored for outside students. This was a common practice before the pandemic. During the pandemic, some courses moved to have the all exams fully electronic for all students on campus and online. So many courses continue this practice now. And uh, so it's becoming just really the same process for online and on campus students in terms of submission homework and receiving the graded homework electronically and taking the exams. But and if you are a remote student, online student happen to be in Los Angeles, you want to stop by to attend the lecture live, you are most welcome to do it. It's a standard thing that's happening. Another standard question is the difference between programs in astronautical and aerospace engineering. Again, I would refer you to this publication. We don't have time to talk about this, but the bottom line is that traditional aerospace programs, they still are being dominated by aeronautical, fluid mechanics, aviation type coursework, and astronautical engineering, space engineering with the tremendous remarkable growth of space industry during the last couple of decades became a highly specialized area, requires really focused education. So that's why we started a, a department, a separate new department and continuing increase in the number of students enrolling in our program is a clear indication that we are providing something of value for the practicing engineers in the industry and government centers. And the next slide, please. And finally, these are the contact information. So you have Marilyn's email here and the telephone and on the our department side, there's our administrators and student advisors on the staff level and also my contact information as a program director. So it's again, you're welcome to reach us. I think this is all and I hand over to Marlon. Thank you, Professor Grumman. Um, that was very, very insightful. Um, so much information and could definitely, definitely feel your passion. Um, so thank you so much. Um, so let's go ahead and, um, you know, open up um, the, the session now for the Q&A. Um, so we have um, some questions that have come through. So let me go ahead and read those um, out. Um, okay, so there is one that, okay, so that says, will the GRE be required for spring 2024 mission? So, um, Jamie, thank you for your question. So, you know, as of now, um, you know, it hasn't been announced yet whether or not it will be guaranteed um, that it will be coming back. Um, you know, um, so we do recommend, you know, if you don't want to take the GRE um, to apply for fall 2023, because as of now, that is guaranteed to be waived. Um, you know, as um, Professor Grutman did, um, did touch upon before, you know, um, it, um, it, it, it may come back in future semesters. Um, so we do recommend for you to, you know, just refer um, to our website. Um, you know, it will be updated, um, you know, in the in the coming um, weeks um, and it will then once a decision has been made, um, whether or not it will be rec um, required, then it will reflect um, on the astronautical engineering uh, program overview page. I, uh, um, Marilyn, if I may uh, to add, yeah. I, I just want to mention that preparing and taking GRE exams is not a waste of time. Mm -hmm. It will never hurt to refresh what you studied during the Bachelor of Science years. Moreover, among our online students, there is a significant fraction of students who worked in the industry five or even 10 years and coming back to school. They, they are becoming rusty in their what they studied during the Bachelor of Science years. And it will tremendously, this preparation for Jerry's will tremendously help you during studies because rather than desperately trying to refresh what you studied five years ago and forgot completely, you already will be prepared and you will focus on the new information that is coming in this advanced coursework that you will be pursuing. So it's again, we uh, our program is, uh, 
merit-based. We just try to bring best in our students, best instructors. So again, it will not be a waste of time studying for GREs, but it's if you want to skip it, it's your call. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Grotman, for that. Um, so there is a um, so here's a question um for you. Um so it's more so it's questions for remote learning. Is there opportunity for joining student groups such as the rocket launch lab? Also, are there still opportunities to complete a thesis? So this is, there are no straight answers for that. Now, joining uh, student groups, if you are online student from far away, it would require to find uh, a certain uh, topic of work, which would be not hands on because uh, these groups produce real hardware. For example, a rocket, a rocket uh, propulsion laboratory three years ago launched a rocket uh, beyond the von Karman line. It's a hundred kilometers up in the atmosphere. The first group in the world, a liquid rocket uh, group builds 3D printed uh, engines with the regenerative cooling. So it's, but if there's a topic can be found that you could contribute by doing remotely data analysis or some design then obviously you can participate, but it needs to be worked out with the leadership of these groups because these groups are not run by faculty. It will take out all the fun from the work. It's self-organized student groups with 30 or 40 students engaged in each of these groups, rocket lab and the liquid propulsion lab. And the, the, we as a faculty only trying to help assure that the safety is in place, which is very important. It's rocketry. It's a dangerous area, obviously. And also with the, the funding uh, for the support group activities is there. So it's uh, if it's, the topic can be found, then it should be no problem at all. The same with the thesis. It is possible to have a thesis. A faculty member should be found, full-time faculty member, that would be, that would be, uh, First of all, the, his or her expertise should be covering the area of interest of student, what student wants to do in the thesis, but also these faculty members should be comfortable that yes, indeed, a remote student, online student could do a good job doing such a thesis. Again, it could only be not hands on. It couldn't be testing something or building something. It, would be some something more as a data analysis or design on the paper on the computer or some specific calculations simulations so it's in principle it's possible it requires further exploration in the specific cases thank you for that uh, professor Grutman. um so here's another question um and it's regarding a uh, summer semester courses so the first question is are astronautical courses offered during the summer semester on a condensed schedule or are they a full semester? So the answer is uh, very few courses are offered uh, during the summer. Uh, typically we have uh, two courses at most, sometimes one, sometimes two. Now offering of the courses on the condensed schedule or the stretch through the entire three months it's a choice by a particular instructor. So if the instructor wants to do it as a condensed, he would do it condensed, otherwise it's stretched. So it's again, we, uh, uh, in my experience, most of the courses are condensed and this requires significant commitment, although it's for like six or seven weeks only. Mm -hmm. But uh, think about the following, a three unit course, well, during a regular semester means three hours lectures and approximately six hours self-study, uh, books, uh, reviewing materials, doing homework. So it's about say nine hours per week. If it's condensed, it's twice as much. So it's uh, close to 20 hours per week. So you have to make sure that uh, your other work, re work requirements uh, do not interfere or would allow you to do that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think just following up on that as well, um, a normal spring and fall um, semester, or they are our normal intakes, and those are usually five months. So then a summer semester is almost half of that. Um, so yeah, so in terms, you know, um, if you, it is a lot smaller, so then the amount that you learn uh, will be equivalent or similar to a standard semester. So you will really need to, you know, manage, manage your own time wisely as well, because it is really, really fast paced. Um, okay, perfect. Um, okay, so yeah, I don't see any other questions that are coming in. Um, so, uh, you know, um, if you guys have any other questions, you know, um, after the webinar, um, you know, feel free to reach out, um, you know, um, if you have any questions for Professor Gretman, you know, you could contact him directly. Um, if you have questions regarding, you know, um, how to get started and enrolling for, um, as a Dan of a Trivi student, um, you know, you could contact me, um, and then I'll be able to assist you through your journey. Um, but, you know, thank you guys so much for joining today's session, you know, and thank you so much, Professor Grutman, um, you know, for joining us, taking the time and just, you know, walking us through the astronautical engineering programs. And um, I'm just, doing you know, this from the moon, as you Yeah, can see. I know, he's from the moon, doing it from the moon. Um, you know, and I'm sure, you know, um, you know, thank you so much, um, Professor Grutman. And, you know, it's been very, very informative and insightful for me. And I'm sure, you know, everyone who has joined as well has also, you know, been able to get some really good takeaways. Um, so thank you guys, um, you know, have a great day. Um, and as we say at USC, fight on. Thank you. See you on campus or in the internet. Exactly.